Well, thank you once again to everyone that submitted your questions for today's q and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get started. Let's get these questions answered. Mr. Tuxedo is going to kick us off by asking first, what are your thoughts on the rumors of WWE's interest in TNA talent, and who do you think they should take? Um, I don't know, because then you see other things where WWE has no interest in them. I mean, it's kind of one of those deals that if you think somebody can be good for your company, then regardless of where they worked before, you would think there would be somebody you have some interest in. Uh, you know, maybe if Joe is a success for them, maybe their thoughts on former TNA talents uh, will change a little bit. And in some ways, I hope it does. In terms of guys that they should take off of that TNA roster, um, guys that I would like to see there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bobby Roode. Because I think he could do some really good things, at least as an upper mid-card guy, as a heel in that company, but also as a flexibility to be able to be face. Um, Davey Richards and Eddie Edwards as a tag team. If you brought them together as a tag team and brought them, you know, uh, you know, I'd love to see maybe Bobby Lashley get another chance. Maybe you could set him up as a future opponent for Lesnar down the road. You know, I would like to see Kenny King, but I would have fears of what WWE would do with Kenny King. Um, you know, so there's some guys, maybe Austin Aries, you know, as kind of that veteran presence in the middle of the card. You know, so there are some guys. Uh, then his other question is, how's your running going? Um, it's going. It's, it's, it's strange because this is the most serious running I've done in about 13 years. And the biggest transition for me being 34 is uh, first understanding that my body is going to have good days and bad days that comes both in training and that also comes on race day it's just the nature of the beast it's also been an adjustment especially the first couple of months of training this year to focus on what my reality is now compared to what my past was you know, it's hard when I sit there and think back, you know, whereas one point in time I was a guy that could run the mile in 430, you know, now I sit there in age 34 and I'm a five-minute miler. You know, it's hard to adjust. Now, granted, I've only been training for a couple of months, so I feel good considering I'm a guy that hasn't eaten that well in his 20s and his 30s, a guy that smoked for years. The fact that I can even run a five-minute mile and slightly below it, actually, you know, is, is encouraging to me and is encouraging me to keep going and going forward. It's going well. I usually work out about, not that you ask, but I'm telling you any fucking ways because you open Pandora's box. I run some form of workout uh, two to three times every single day with maybe one to two days off each week, depending on kind of how I feel. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely helped me from a health standpoint. I feel a lot better on a more consistent basis. I have more energy even when I'm tired from all the working out I've done. You know, like this morning, I already ran uh, some quarters and a bunch of 200s at tempo pace. I'll be going out later and doing a three-mile tempo run and then probably some strides as well. Then tomorrow I'll be doing a bunch of speed work. You know, so it's it's something else for me to do. I enjoy it, and I will continue to enjoy it, and I can't wait to see what happens through the rest of the summer. Um, you know, my big thing now is I have a couple of goals in mind for later on. One is there's a meetup in Alexandria in September, Potomac Valley Games. So I'll be trying to do a bunch of events there and win a bunch of medals there. Uh, then there will be the VCU Broad Street Mile downtown in Richmond. And I'll be trying to win a couple of those races. I'll enter multiple miles there. And then the ultimate goal at the end of the year, it sounds kind of odd, but the one thing I've never done as a runner is run the, a marathon. So I'm looking forward to doing the Richmond Marathon. I think it's on November 14th. So any of you that live in the Richmond area want to meet the Schleg Daddy or see him at work, you could go see me at one of those events, I guess. Uh, M. Johnson 276. Uh, do you think WWE should have booked Jack Swagger as a dominant Brock Lesnar type of monster during his world title run in 2010 no they shouldn't have given him the fucking briefcase and the title to begin with as soon as it took him two minutes to unhook the briefcase i would have had him immediately lose it the next night on raw but once you went there they shouldn't have they shouldn't have done what they did in terms of the booking they could have booked him a lot better Luis roulette are you ready for the kevin owens gimmick change after this feud where cena 
with Cena, where he's shucking and jiving. Um, <laughs> I don't know if he's going to be doing all that. Now, if he sat there and told me that Kevin Owens is going to be chasing down the mysterious rainbow unicorns that are backstage, then, you know, maybe I have some. Oh, God. Please don't change his gimmick. Mick Brad's 95. So what's more likely to not happen come Sunday? C Cena losing clean on pay-per-view twice in a row or Reigns not winning money in the bank? Uh, what's more likely to not happen? Uh... Cena losing clean on a pay-per-view twice in a row. I'd be stunned if Reigns doesn't win that money in the bank. Uh, Chairman 015. Should the Shield triple threat match happen at this year's SummerSlam, or should it wait until next year? You know, one of the things I hear a lot with people talking about how many of the part-timers are going to be involved with Mania next year, and it's going to be part-time of Mania, and you hear a lot of talk about that title match could very well be a Shield triple threat. You know, I'm not a huge fan of doing that Shield triple threat at next year's WrestleMania. I'm really not. I think it's a, it's a poor allocation and use of resources. I understand you wanting to put these guys in a certain spot on the card. I get all that. And you might not have a lot of room for them, but you got to find some room for them. I mean, I would rather sit there and at worst, at worst, have two of the former Shield members face off of each other, like whether it be Roman Reigns versus Dean Ambrose or Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins. It's then the other guy off to do something else with somebody, or maybe even better, have all three of them work with somebody individually. That would be what I'd rather do. I would rather see that if they're going to do that. I would rather see that at SummerSlam, although I'm not even sure the company would do it there. Uh, you'd have to see also how Brock Lesnar would factor in there. Maybe you do some type of four-way. You know, if you do it at Money in the Bank where you actually had either Ambrose win or Ambrose come really, really close, but he got screwed over and then Roman's Reigns, Roman Reigns cashed in, excuse me. You know, you could do a lot of different things. Uh, Mexo Man. Where would you have Roman cash in if he wins? Honestly, at this point in time, at Money in the Bank. I don't even think I would wait. I really don't. I don't think Seth Rollins' championship run has been all that particularly good. Um, I'm not sure the company would get behind Dean Ambrose in a championship run at this point. I think you have more flexibility with Roman as a champion, frankly, at this point, especially if you use that as an excuse to flip him heel. Because you could even start to see maybe where they're going to eventually tease Seth Rollins turning face. You already have Dean Ambrose face. I sure the hell hope they're not going to turn him heel. Brock Lesnar is face. Those are three guys for Reigns to feud with almost immediately. A Montezzi Moore. Is Rusev's career on a downfall due to the John Cena rivalry? Well, it most certainly didn't help his character. And it's so often the case with anybody that works with John Cena. It's nice because you get that spot. But you don't usually come out the better end of it unless you're a Breakfast Club member, and that's the truth. Now, maybe Rusev should be focusing on ruining Lana's life and putting a baby inside of her. That's what he should be focused on, and that's what he should be doing. He should be fucking with all of you. You want to get some real heat on Rusev, and you really want to get people to pay money to see him get his ass kicked? Have him knock up Lana. Oh, that's going to piss off a lot of dudes. And maybe he could take some lessons from my good friend Montezzi Moore here, who actually, unlike Triple H, knows how to make sons. So maybe Rusev can make some Bulgarian brute son with Lana. Who the fuck knows? And yes, Montezzi Moore, maybe you should uh, offer an olive branch to Triple H where you could maybe teach him how to make a son so that way he's not trying to go up to crying kids and trying to sit there and spew this whole spew of garbage and lies about how his parents don't love him and that he could come over to God's side and God is his father and all this other crap. He could have a son of his own if he only listened to you. How do you do it? That's what we all want to know. Fresh Carbon. If Owens were to win the U.S. title from Cena, who do you think should beat Owens for it? The fuck if I know? Great question. I don't know, honestly. Uh, Matt Mefe 2. Which feud was better overall? Jeff Hardy versus Matt Hardy or Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk? I will go Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk. I like that feud better. I thought the dynamics of it were much better. Yes, you had the Kane versus Abel, brother, sibling rivalry crap with Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, but I always thought the payoff at WrestleMania 25 was very disappointing to me. Uh, Jeff Hardy versus CM Punk was incredible. I mean, this shit was main eventing major pay-per-views in 2009 over the Breakfast Club. Just think about that. Yeah, I love Jeff Hardy versus Punk. One of I, I could argue my favorite rivalry or my favorite feud of the PG era. Diclonius Games. Should Cena Owens have been titled for his title with Owens going over this Sunday? Uh you could make an argument for that. I mean, 
you know, Cena's always issuing the open challenges, but he's already faced Owens once, and it's not for the title. And here we go again, and it's not for the title. You know, I mean, you could open up a lot of interesting possibilities if the title was on the line and Cena did drop it to Owens back at uh, the last show, Elimination Chamber, including bringing Cena on that show to try and get his U.S. title back against Owens on NXT. That July 4 special in Tokyo would sure seem to be the perfect place to do that. And space it out a little bit so that way you're not doing a match two weeks after they already fucking had one. That would be maybe what I would do. Um, should it have been? Maybe. But it doesn't look like they're going to involve the title at this point. Uh, now I don't know necessarily that they have to. I don't know if the dynamics of this automatically call for uh, Cena having to put that title on the line. Uh, Duke THS. If the Kofi, Kofi Brock match actually happens, is it the most interesting Lesnar match there's been since its return? <laughs> I'm interested to know how the fuck they book Kofi against him. And you know what? In some ways it might be, because I'd want to see how the fuck this thing would play out. <laughs> All right, underscore Neebs. Would you rather watch the Bears lose every game this season or use the bathroom after Rikishi? Uh, you know, on the one hand, I would hate to see the Bears lose all their games, so I would choose using the bathroom after Rikishi because, let's face it, just because the guy was big and he did the stink face doesn't mean he drops the biggest boo-boos in the world. You know, as somebody that in previous jobs has cleaned bathrooms, I can tell you some of the foulest smelling things I've ever smelled were from the woman's bathroom. I uh, guess they were. However, with that said... I'd have to go with seeing the Bears lose all season because I know if the Bears lost all season, that would make them 0-16 and pretty much guarantee them the number one overall pick in a draft in 2016 that's going to feature a couple of quarterbacks that could potentially be worth the number one overall pick. Therefore, as a result, allowing them to finally move on from the Jay Cutler disaster, which is now going on year number seven, and meaning this team would really truly be beginning their necessary full, total, complete, top-down, bottom-up rebuild. So I might have to choose the Bears losing all season. Ruck fools for life. Do you think Kevin Owens should dismantle John Cena by powerbombing him multiple times at Money in the Bank and take him off of TV? Um, you know, there's a part of me that says maybe if they don't have Kevin Owens just beat John Cena again, maybe there's a way you could still have Owens obviously look like the better man and he could sit there and fuck up John Cena to the point where uh, Kevin Owens says, I don't even want to fucking do this anymore, and he walks off. Or Kevin Owens intentionally gets himself disqualified so that way he can beat Cena's ass some more. You know, I don't know about the taking him off TV part. Um, as a WWE, just whenever they take Cena off TV, they're always in a hurry to rush and bring him back, and it never works out. I mean, so, but if they don't fully have Owens go over Cena clean on Sunday, it could still work as long as it doesn't involve Cena going over Owens clean. If they do that, then it's just more of the same old shit, and they've just wasted our fucking time. Okay. So thanks all of you guys that tweeted out your questions for this Q&A. Uh, continue to probably do them about once a week, somewhere between Wednesday and Friday of every week. So just pay attention to add OTR Central on Twitter. I'll let you know when to send out your questions. Thanks for you guys that sent your questions. I enjoyed this. I'll see you later.